Hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Going Old School, Developing and Nurturing Your Internal Talent Database. I'm Ketan Gajjar, Founder and Director at RPO Arena. RPO Arena works with recruiting companies in the UK and the US. We provide virtual staffing services. We work on every activity within the recruitment life cycle that does not require a warm handshake. Everything ranging from basic admin tasks to sourcing, candidate mapping talent, talent pipelining, database cleansing, back office, digital marketing, social media marketing, etc, etc. Our model of operations is very similar to you hiring somebody on shore, staff working on your teams, they work exclusively for you, mirroring your work hours. Let's talk about the objective of our webinar today. The objective of our webinar is to ensure that we provide actionable insights on developing and nurturing your internal talent database. What is internal database important for recruiters. It has helped them not only maintain but develop valuable relationships with candidates over time and that has helped them draw from the pool of reliable candidates when there's been a need in the future. And that's been one of the main reasons for their success. Even when recruiters, they've gone pitching their services to their clients, internal database has been one of the talking points, one of the USPs. Before we, we, we proceed, let's try and understand that what are the reasons, what are the main reasons recruiters neglect effectively utilizing the internal database. And in my experience, almost in the range of 80 to 90% recruiters don't use it effectively for three primary reasons. Reason number one is they believe that the newest ones are the best ones. So every profile or every CV posted on external platforms within the last 24 hours or within the last one week, every new CV that is posted, every new candidate that's posted uh, their, their CV is the best one. And that's the mindset. Now that mindset clubbed with the pressure of filling jobs is detrimental. And reason number three is mainly education. There are a lot of recruiters out there who actually find it really challenging to navigate through their ATS or CRM, whatever system they are using. So three primary reasons. Reason number one is the belief, the mindset that the newest ones are the best ones. Reason number two is obviously the pressure to fill jobs quickly. And number three is purely the challenge of navigating the, the ATS or the CRM. Let me know uh, in the chat if you believe these are the reasons that, that you come across or this is something that you feel. And feel free to put in your questions in the chat box and, and uh, I'll try and answer them uh, at the end of the session. Let's talk about the reason actually why our internal database is valuable. And before that, let's talk about what are the major drawbacks. Now there are five major drawbacks in my from my perspective. The biggest drawback on relying on third-party platforms is limited access and, and limited control. Now, third-party platforms are pretty much standardized. They've got predefined processes, predefined systems, and then they are off-the-shelf products. Now, that might not necessarily meet all your requirements. It also results into the increased number of steps in your sourcing process, in your recruiting process. And along with that, when, when we talk about the limited access, if you operate in a niche sector in, in a very specialist area, you might not get access to all the candidates You're using some of the third party platforms that are generic. So that's one. Uh, reason number two is obviously the higher costs. So if you are solely relying on external pools to meet your sourcing needs, and then you're not just going to subscribe to one tool or one application, you're going to have access to multiple sources that means you're going to spend a ton of cash, a ton of your budget on subscribing to those tools on a monthly basis or a, on an annual basis. So that definitely has an impact on your profitability. Reason number three is reduced customization again, links into the reason number one. They use their own standard features that may not fully align with your company's requirement when it comes to integrating the processes and systems. And it sort of works as a bottleneck and which is why there are a lot of recruiters who end up using Excel sheets as well at times to sort of manage that process. Number four is, is now this is major and this is a major threat because it's a dependency issue. 
if you are solely responsible or if you're solely sort of relying on using third party tools for your sourcing needs you are literally putting your entire process your entire business on a threat because there are a number of things that can happen because it's third party they can increase the prices and then which are no longer affordable to you number one and number two they can change the industry they are catering to they would say okay fine don't want to work with this industry literally stopping and then we've seen this happening in the past and number three is changing your work dynamics as well you are trying to uh, change your vertical, your desk, your sector, and that provider might no longer be the, the right, the relevant one uh, for your system. So, the dependency issue is is one of the major drawbacks of using third-party platforms. And lastly, is is the lack of differentiation and then you know, lack of data. So, if you are again one of those thousand recruiters who believes in this mindset of the newest ones are the best ones, so you are again competing with thousand other recruiters who are fishing from the same pool, probably at the same time, probably for the same job, and then finding the, the, the candidates for the same role that you're working on. There is no differentiation that, that it provides you because if you're going to source the candidate for a new job that is coming yesterday or today, somebody else is working on the same job and you haven't built the rapport with that candidate, so there's no equity and then there's no differentiation that why would that candidate work with you and why would that client work with you because somebody else is getting the same candidate from you. and then. Two is you know lack of data. Now, when you are just sourcing from the the same pool, uh, you don't have any historical data to help you streamline your recruiting and sourcing process. So, lack of differentiation and lack of data definitely one of the major drawbacks as well. So, again, going back, limited control and limited access to the candidate pool. You obviously have higher costs. You obviously have reduced customization, dependency, and then lack of differentiation and data. So these are five major drawbacks that you have when you're solely relying on third party for your sourcing requirements. Now let's dive into why our internal database is of value uh, to us and what are the benefits that it offers. I mean, and you, I, I've sort of covered this in my teaser, but if, if you look at the benefits, number one, the direct benefit is, is your cost saving. And th the reason is when, when you are developing and nurturing your internal database, you're obviously going to utilize it much more than third party tools your internal system, your, your ATS is going to be the first port of sourcing methodology where you go to find candidates. That means you're reducing using other sources, which obviously reduces your subscription fees monthly or annually. So that's one. And number two is obviously better candidate matching on your, on your system. So yeah, okay. you, you have better matching and quality higher. So when you still coded the candidates, when you actually worked on your database to develop it well, when you spend time making sure that the data that you have is accurate, the, the match results for CVs against the respective jobs that you have in your system are going to be much better compared to earlier. So you'll have better, better quality matching candidates and better hires. Of course, you have better control over the data because you own it partially. What's the quality of candidates you have on your system? And then lastly, the enhanced candidate experience. What that means is when the type of candidates you have in your system, you're going to be personalizing the messaging, be it text messaging, sending out emails. So every information that, you, that goes out of your system is going to be quality, relevant to your target audience. If you've got Java developers on your system, London and Southeast, the messaging that you're going to do is relevant to Java developers and for the jobs in that region, for interview prep, for everything. So it's not going to be mass mailing or cold mailing to thousands of candidates and then a very common messaging which is relevant to some and irrelevant to most. So your approach is going to be more targeted and what it does is our, our entire industry is based on relationships. Now if you want to cultivate better relationships you have to have personalized messaging, you have to have a targeted approach rather than the services for all because you are catering to a small pool of community and then that is what uh, you should be focusing on. So when you effectively manage your data, when you're making sure that the quality of information on your system is accurate, your messaging automatically is going to be much better when you work on it. And then lastly, which I've not mentioned on this, but data-driven decision-making. When you're looking after your database, the information that's going to be on your system is going to be quality. So when you have quality information, the decision that's go that's going to be, that you're going to be using to make, the data that you're going, to, you're going to be using to make the decisions is going to be much better quality as well. So to outline, obviously, one, it's, it's, it's quick hiring and cost effective. Two is you have better ownership of data because 
the data is sensitive and it's quality information that you want. Better quality, you know, matching of candidates, enhanced candidate experience, and then data-driven decision making is is what you get when you look after and nurture your internal database. That's that's the benefit. So, and this is one question I get asked by a uh, lot of recruiters actually who are either new or even who somebody who's been in the system for for quite some time is how do I go about collecting data or how do I go about developing quality database and. I, I would always say again, like everything in life and in business, you you need a plan. You don't want to just go out and start hunt, hunting in the dark. You want to define what is it that you're looking for before actually spending time collecting the data. So if you are a recruiter, again, working in tech recruitment sector, recruiting developers, you're working in London and Southeast, you want to drill down to the last specific point. As you narrow down as much as possible, define the qualifying criteria of, of your niche and that's the starting point so once you define those points that's when you say okay fine this is now the time i'm going to go out and then start sourcing now before you start sourcing obviously you want to know that okay fine what are the tools i want to use to source and develop my database if you're a recruiter either starting from the scratch or if you're already an existing business setting up a new desk uh, in a new industry it's applicable to both of them so you, you, you've defined your criteria, what you're looking for. Now you, you have to know, okay, fine, what are the tools I'll, I'll need? You definitely need an ATS, an applicant tracking system. You don't want to work on Excel sheets. I've seen so many recruiters sourcing candidates and storing the data, the, data, the information on Excel sheets. Does it work? Yes, short time. Is it sustainable? Not at all. Because the moment you have more than 50 to 100 candidates, it, you, it's going to be very difficult to look after that data and then actually it's going to be very time consuming uh, leave alone the, the maintenance part so find that ATS and applicant tracking system that's relevant to your industry that works for you there are lots of systems available out there most of them are cost effective and then pretty much plug and play so find the ATS you also want to find an outbound marketing tool now one of the, the systems that I recommend is, is Candidate Hub They've been around for a long time, good testimonials, you want to check them out. If not, there are lots of others available out there. Now, why do you need an outbound marketing tool? Uh, the reason is you want to maintain and nurture your database. And if you really want to effectively manage it, you need a tool that's going to actually have a sequence of events, email messaging going out, prospective events going out. So you need that tool, which is seamlessly integrating with that, with the ATS. And then the, lastly, what you want to make sure is define your quality parameters, define the accuracy that you want on your system. Lastly, so let's start with. So ensuring data accuracy. So how, how do you do it? Well, you, you, you define your search criteria. You, you've got the tools in place. Now, a lot of times, and I'm sure you would have done this, you go onto LinkedIn, you find a profile and it has limited information. So what you'll do is, Okay, let me just download this profile and let me just process it on my ATS. All it will have is first name, last name and bit information about themselves, about the candidate. A lot of times recruiters will start sourcing for a, for a respective job. They'll end up processing a totally different CV you know, or for a different role, believing that, okay, fine, I'm going to use this information three months down the line because I also recruit for these jobs and then uh, this profile might be relevant, the CV will be relevant uh, three, six months down the line. You really want to be clear on, on defining what accuracy means to you from your data management perspective. Uh, there are a lot of recruiters who will also just process basic information, first name, last name, and just the CV on the system. Now, if you are processing the CV on, on your ATS, you want to make sure that, okay, fine, it has all the relevant information fed in, uh, ranging from their name, their contact information, they're, uh, they're skill coded, uh, you tag them with respect to details wherever required because at the end of the day, the data accuracy is going to result into better candidate matching. If you don't do these steps, if you don't follow these steps, your matching is still going to be a problem. And then you'll again end up relying on third party tools to source new candidates. And at the end of the day, your CV database, your ATS will be a CV junkyard. So please, please, please focus on these three steps meticulously when you're developing your internal database. I will come on to the nurturing piece on the following slide, but 
if if you have any questions feel free to shoot them into the the chat box and uh, i'll be more than happy to answer so how, how do you nurture your talent pool sounds pretty straightforward pretty simple but if only it was 80 to 90% of recruiters would still be utilizing the intern database we all know we work in a industry which is based on relationships which is based on communication so first step is to regularize your communication and engagement and how do you do that you will have to spend time defining what co- good communication looks like number 1 what good engagement looks like you'll have to really spend time defining it as for your target audience and which is where personalized outreach strategies come into picture so again if you're recruiting in the tech market if you're recruiting developers uh, in london and southeast the messaging has to be specific to that audience which they're going to like you don't want to be called as a spammer you want to make sure that okay fine you're you're sending out relevant jobs to them which are relevant to their geographical location you're sending out relevant information be it from interview prep or be it about the specific industry you want the information to be as much targeted as much as personalized as possible and lastly following step 1 and 2 you want to leverage that data that information for targeted recruitment remember everything that you do on your ats is going to help you devise an effective recruiting process devise an effective sourcing process because that data is going to be information and that information is going to help you make quality decision and an improvisation on what's really working what's not so again build that communication and engagement channel how often are you going to communicate that with them how are you going to communicate with them what content are you going to send out be it videos be it uh, ebooks whatever information but you will need to spend time formulating that strategy and then executing it on a regular basis and then obviously leverage the data for data driven recruitment let's talk about our 5r framework which has been very very effective for the businesses that we've supported in developing and nurturing the database it's again pretty straightforward if you really implement this you will see the results guaranteed in 90 days literally so you want to conduct a thorough research and then identify potential candidates and gather that information this again goes back to our slide on how to develop data so you, you when you research you want to create that clear guidelines define those guidelines that you're going to use to research potential candidates in your market recording again very impo- important so how are you going to record this you're going to record this on, on your ats you don't want to use this excel sheets or any of the forms have a proper system in place to record the information so when i say recording you will have to record not just just their first names and last names but skill code the, the candidates as much as possible so that they end up in a better match make sure that you have the correct information when it comes to the contact details you have their detailed cv you have their updated cv you want to review so you want to review your database on a regular basis conduct the audit of your database on a monthly basis conduct those random checks uh, on your database and then create those qualifying criteria in terms of what good looks like when you're doing quality audits for your system you don't want to have thousands of candidates that you're not going to use you want the database that is going to be put to effective use that can help you with better matching good quality hires quick hiring and obviously at the end of the day have an impact on your sourcing process which is more placements so that should be your objective and it all you know revolves around the the reach out how do you communicate with your target audience with your candidates how do you engage with them what is your frequency of communication are you going to send out text messages whatsapp messages emails conduct uh, an outreach on linkedin how often are you going to do that are you going to do that on a weekly basis is it by weekly basis how are you going to deal with candidates who are, who are actively looking for new jobs how are you going to contact candidates who have been on your system for last 6 months so you, you need a really detailed approach to make sure that you are effectively utilizing your internal database remember it's a gold mine if you use it effectively and then you want to repeat these steps consistently so research record review reach out and repeat you don't want to miss out on any of these steps and research is really important because that's the fundamental base of the entire nurturing process entire development process you have to know what you're looking for and that's when you start sourcing and gathering the data using respective tools let's talk about uh, the case study with one of our clients where we've helped them obviously uh, save significant returns on utilizing our services 
So again, a, a large recruitment company based out of the UK, catering to multiple sectors, had thousands of candidates on the system. And their challenge was again, very similar to lots of other recruiters that their teams were heavily dependent on third party tools. They came to us that, okay, fine, we, we want to reduce a, the spend on the tools and, but more, more so we want to increase our dependency on our own tool, on our internal ATS, on, on the candidates on our system. What we did was, uh, see, there's no point. So if you've got, let's say, 10,000 candidates on your system, there's no point hunting in the dark. You have to start somewhere. There has to be a, a, a sort of a very targeted approach. So where do you start? We suggested you narrow down on the niche that you want to focus on for starters. So let's say, okay, fine, you know, again, taking the example of Java developers or de developer market, London and Southeast developers, at this level, in this pay rate, in this salary criteria. So, okay, you got a pool of 2,000 candidates. Okay, now let's further narrow down. Where is your supply demand gap right now? You're saying London and Southeast, let's let's narrow down on a specific region. Then you come to, let's say, 1,000 candidates. And that's your starting point. We help them with developing the outbound marketing campaign, the communication process as well, the engagement process, clubbed with our phone-based cleansing process as well. So. When the okay, fund you, you sent out a thousand emails to the candidates over a period of certain time, you obviously get responses from a lot of them. A lot of them are looking, they open their emails, and basis that when you follow up with a phone based approach that, hey, hey candidate, I've sent you an email, this is who we are, I, what's your current status? And once you get the information, you update that on your ATS. Again, this links it back into quality hire, better candidate matching, and the results were really fantastic. So if, if you read read through it, they were able to reduce reliance on the, their paid job postings and third party agencies by about 30, 31%. They had increased candidate quality as well. So that allowed them to increase in successful placements by about 21%. So coming back to uh, the results, uh, they're able to reduce their reliance on obviously job postings and, and then third party tools and agencies by about 30%. Improved candidate quality that resulted into 21% increase in successful placements and about 23% improvement in, in time to hire. Uh, so a significant impact there by utilizing a combination of outbound marketing and phone-based approach to nurture their internal database. Let's talk about the tips now on, on how to best nurture your database. Uh, a lot of these tips are simple, straightforward. You can start using effectively. You know, cost-effective data collection. A lot of recruiters out there want to utilize job boards or third-party tools to collect data but there are a lot of recruiters who want to do it on a, on a if you're on a shoestring budget and if you want to leverage third party then there are lots of rpos outsourcing companies who have access to job portals who have access to linkedin recruiters and then if your sole objective is to populate the database you can contact them and then get, get the services to uh, collect data you know effectively again uh, leverage rpos uh, you know largest database management tools they also have other tools like lusha rocket breach where you can also get access to uh, you know mobile numbers, email addresses, mainly used for market mapping and intelligence. Uh, you want to you know regularly update the data, so you know data accuracy is key. So looking up your database, maintaining it is is is, is uh, crucial. Consistent engagement again. Our industry is relationship based. We cannot just rely on transactional approach of sending out emails. You need to be on the radar of your target audience via different approaches. So one is you've got your tools, but two is you definitely need a personalized approach. Once that, okay, fine, you sent out emails, sent out messages, you need somebody to contact those candidates manually, talk to them, build that relationship, update the details on the system, and then take it from there. Uh, again, personalized outreach. Once that you have accurate data, personalize the outreach as much as possible. You cannot leave it to chance that okay fine i'm just going to send the same message to thousand other candidates which is combination of everything including developers healthcare workers because it's it's not one for all it has to be customized it has to be more personalized data driven so utilize the data and insights that you get from the ats once you start using it effectively seamless integration so when you work with either outbound marketing companies or those, the seamless integration in, in terms of providing that support. Again, talk, talking from the offshoring perspective, companies operate 24 seven. If you are a business who is operating in different geographies, if you're a recruitment company in the UK, but also have presence in the US and want to conduct the outreach, outsourcing companies have 24 seven setups. You can utilize 
they're, they're, you can leverage the, the, the setup and the availability of resources to regenerate the database. Scalability, scalability definitely. So a combination of outbound marketing along with an offshore partner definitely helps you scale quickly, manage your database quite efficiently. And then lastly, by partnering with an offshore RPO, you are enabling your recruiters to do more with less because then they're focusing on core tasks. Here's the practical insights. Uh, le let me just check how to search city-based research. I've got a question from, so how to search city-based research? I mean, any best approach to build internal database location-based? I would suggest that if, if you are utilizing external tools, they have those those dispositions or, or, or those those setups in terms of how can you conduct a search which is city based part-time full-time jobs it's it's relatively easy linkedin has that feature as well if you look at advanced search features and then i'm sure there are a lot of other tools who provide you with uh, their respective search including the city the title uh, salary rates everything so you can use that uh, again one of the the key questions i get asked is about the rois that what is the roi if i nurture my internal, internal database or what or develop my internal database I would go back to those five points. The ROI is a quick hiring process, better candidate matching and quality hires, significant cost reduction, obviously building quality relationships, enhanced communication and approach, and then lastly, data-driven decisions. So that's the ROI. Of course, you want to outline the metrics on, on the system. You, you want to make sure that what are your parameters to measuring what's working, what's not working, and which is where goal, so goal setting is really imperative. You have to know that, okay, fine, this is where I want to be, and from here to here, from one to five, and this is how I'm going to achieve that. And then this is how I'm going to measure that on a daily basis, weekly basis. And then these are the steps I'm going to take to improvise. If you are somebody who's already got an internal database, and then I'm sure a lot of recruiters out there have thousands of candidates on the system. And once again, less than 10, almost about 10 to 15% of recruiters effectively utilize the internal database and they are also more successful because they have built relationships with the candidates which are on the system and then they have utilized that pool of candidates to fill the jobs which come uh, obviously over time uh, and it's those relationships that have helped them to also get referrals so don't forget that that element of uh, getting referrals if you have been in, in, in touch with a candidate for a long time they are going to share significant information not just about their role and their status but what's happening in the in their business what's happening in their, that industry and from a recruiter's perspective this is gold dust you want as much information as possible about the industry you're, you're recruiting into you might also end up getting leads for new business so there's a ton of opportunity that lies on your internal database it only depends how you start using it and when you start using it if you have any further questions, feel free to shoot. Okay, there's one question that what's the starting point of, of regenerating an internal database or, or cleansing an internal database for somebody who's got a very, very small budget. And then the best way to go, go for this is start with an outbound marketing campaign. The tools are not expensive. They, they, are, they are reasonably priced. But what you'll have to do is you'll have to narrow down on the pool of candidates you want to cleanse and regenerate. And then then use that list on this outbound marketing tool. And then on that note, Brad and I, Brad is the founder of Candidate Hub. We are doing a webinar on 15th of August, where we'll talk about outbound marketing strategies clubbed with manual database cleansing and then nurturing strategies. Watch out uh, for it. Uh, I'll obviously share more information on LinkedIn and other modes. But yeah, outbound marketing tools are, are cheapest and the best option to go for if you are on a, on a very small budget. But you know, utilize your internal, internal database uh, effectively. Use these practical insights approach to work on your database. I'm going to be sharing the, the recording by Tuesday next week, 30th of July. We also got an ebook on uh, practical insights and tips on developing and nurturing your internal database. That will also be available, available by 1st of August. And I mean, obviously, for recruiters in the UK and the US, if you want the free ebook, feel free to ping me and then I'll be more than happy to share. But thank you very much for being on this webinar and yeah, have a good day.